Hello! Here we are. Welcome back to For the Love of Crochet for another video. I have lots to share with you and um, we should just continue off of last week, or I should say last video. And I had quite a couple of things in the works and so I have those to share with you. I think I'm going to share my fail first. I have a failure and that was, I just realized this is probably not the best chair because it's squeaky. I had this lovely flannel. I love this flannel. It has wonderful colors. It has nice texture. It's so soft. Only the buttons pop on the chest. They pop open too easy and I was thinking I could make it a little larger by ripping the seam and putting a grease <laughs> and punk it up. Okay, I think this is a fail because it looks unattractive. I put it on and it's just, it just doesn't look good and the buttons still pop. So there we go. It is a fail. I put it on both sides and I tried it on and it's just, I did better on one side than I did the other. Oh, can you see that one? Um, so I'm not sure which side is the better side, but yeah, so I'm not very good at sewing or I haven't learned, I guess, you know, and I'm sure there's a nice way to rip it and then fold it and sew this on to where it's not visible, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not happy with it. So this is a fail. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it now. Maybe use the fabric for something. I have no idea, but that was my fail from last podcast. And then I also have, well, I don't have any more failures, I don't think. Oh, I do. I was supposed to work on this one. This is a top that has a lace back. But as you can see, once, you know, it's, it's supposed to like attach a little so that it's kind of, peekaboo and so I thought maybe I'll crochet something. I think I got uninspired or unmotivated to complete it because I wanted to make sure I did better on this one than I did my flannel so I did not attempt this one. So that one is a no-go. And now I have some completed ones that I was talking about last week or last podcast and that was our Grinch shirts I was having a Grinch theme for Christmas. As the whole world was, it seemed Grinch ruled this year for Christmas. Anyway, so we had a Grinch theme and I couldn't find anything Grinch when I was shopping, which is the first week of December. And so I couldn't even find the right color. So I um, bought these at T-shirt outlet and sewed some little hearts on and I have three sons and so they were gonna wear these ones and I had a more darker green so this is one with the little heart and you can find the little heart pattern if you YouTube it there's um, there's, so, there's some very easy ones to follow to, to crochet a heart and so here's my other one this one's supposed to be the big heart and yeah it worked and we all matched and it was a theme. So that was good. And I think we're gonna continue our Grinch theme next year and see what we can add to it next year and be a little more prepared because apparently shopping for Christmas the first week of December is too late. So yeah, gotta do better on that one. Uh, so yeah, those were the ones continued from the last podcast. And then I also have can you see Goober up here? Goober, the goblin. He came out cute. And he has uh, crocheted eyes. And I think he came out pretty good. And he's made with that Snuggle Premier. Gosh, here we go again with the yarn tucks. 
premiere. I don't. I can't remember it for the life of me. I don't think I have one in here. Well, it was the one that I made the bees with too. And um, I buy the yarn through Premiere, the website, because I can't find it at any of my Joann's or Michael's. Um, and it it runs about $4.99. And I know I'm able, I was able to make this with one and a little, one ball and a little bit more of another one. But I had already started that ball by making a bee. So I, you know definitely need two balls to create this one and this is mint I believe the color and I just use the cream colored whatever that one is for the horns but he's supposed to be a goblin and look at those little feet you can see those little toe knobs for his little digits um, and his hands are just like little circular balls He's cute. I tried to put on teeth, but because the yarn is so light and it's so fluffy, you can't see the white one. I, I guess I should have used this yarn rather than a regular, I used scrap yarn to try and make his teeth stick out. So that didn't work. But other than that, I think he's adorable. His name is Goober the Goblin. Let's see. He's kind of big. He's kind of cute. About a baby size. Um, and I got this Goober the Goblin I got from Etsy by a person called their Crochet Tiv. So at B Crochet Tiv. And a crochet and Tiv is one word, so it's two T's. Anyway, so. I got this one there and I tried to make his belly button pop, but as you can see, I didn't, I don't think I placed it in the right position. I think it was supposed to be here. <laughs> so I'm a little, I'm a finger off. It's supposed to be over here and maybe a little lower. <laughs> I am learning. I'm still trying to get those, whatever you when you're trying to sew on the faces and the, uh, what is it called? I'm not good at it, whatever it is. So yeah, I'm gonna put him up. Let's see, yeah. Okay, so that was continued from last week. As for some completed projects, I will insert a video of a mountain throw blanket. It is gorgeous and took so much work because the way that you attach the squares, because it's like a puzzle. You're, you're making a design using the squares and then you, the, half the squares have half, well, you'll see, half of them can be one color, half of them can be another color. And if you switch it off or get it turned around, it caused me a lot of headaches just assembling these pieces but it came out beautiful and it was a baby shower gift and it's called the mountain throw blanket um by hannah who is this hannah martin and i bought it off etsy and it is nice because my um person that I was giving it to was having the woodland theme and they were going to have like mountains and bears, deer, rabbits. And so I wanted, I think chipmunks or raccoons, something like that, woodland creatures. And so I thought this mountain blanket would be really nice for their nursery. So that is why I picked it. And the yarn I used, excuse me why I squeaked down are these Yarn Bee Cozy from Hobby Lobby. And I got five colors. There's a blue, gray, this green, and a mustard color. And um, okay, here we have the Mountain Throw Blanket. It is quite large. This is a queen size bed and it pretty much covers it. It's supposed to be a baby blanket. So it will last a good long time. They were doing a, mount, um, a woodland theme. This is the yarn I used. It's by Yarn Bee. 
called Warm and Cozy, and those are some gorgeous colors. They had one other color, I believe. But yeah, so this is that lovely blanket. Baby shower gift. It was so nice. It, it came out beautiful. It came out rather large. Um, so hopefully they can, you know, it will age with him as a toddler. It is super adorable. I love it a lot. And one of my favorite things to make is squares. That is one of my favorite things to make is squares. Like I said, the way that you assemble this blanket to make sure each square and I forgot the stitch you use to um, mattress stitch, I believe. So it doesn't, I, I think I would rather just do a single crochet and have the that ripple, the ridges, and maybe just do it on the opposite side because this was reversible. So you could see the, the scene from both sides and that was really cool. It didn't matter which side it was on because there was no wrong side. The way that this pattern was created, there was no wrong side. So I really like that too. I learned something new there. Um, so yeah, that was one of my completed projects. It was a huge one. Oops. Okay. And let's see what else. Some scarves I made. Um, I had itching hands. I didn't want to work on one of my bigger ongoing pieces. Uh, so I just got itching fingers and started looking through my uh, stitch library, I guess you could say, what I have available, some patterns. And so I didn't find anything, but I said, found something on YouTube that was quick. It was a, it's called, on YouTube, Easy One and a Half Hour Scarf. And I don't know her name, but I'll link it. And they are super cute. A squeaky chair. So here is one. Uh, this was a cake. Gosh, see, I left the little yarn label. Oh, the BOGO. It was one of the BOGOs. BOGO yarn. What is this one? It was the thicker, the thicker one. This yarn is quite thick. And it made, the whole thing made this one scarf. And I really like how it um, had, an, had enough to make the um, pom-poms. The pattern that, or the YouTube channel used the, those little fur ball ones, the faux fur. I just wanted to try and incorporate what was left of the yarn ring because it's in the shape of a ring so I like it it came out really nice and all these colors and they cut off nicely and made nice big chunks so this was all on one yarn ring of that BOGO um, Karen cake that and this was a thick I believe it was a number five so that was one and then I really liked the way it came out and so I thought, let me try a different cake. And this one is even softer. This is a Karen cake and it's, um, it's even thicker than this one actually. I think this is a number six. I love the primary colors that they used and I had enough to make the pom-poms as well. Let's see if it'll focus. But what I didn't like is that, I mean, it works and it, it, it works, it works. What I wanted was a little bit of each color in the pom-pom, but when I was left with, after completing the scarf, I was only left with about two colors left. And so, yeah, I, I like it, it's fine. In fact, I put the bluish side on the red and then I put the grayish side on the blue. And I just love the way this feels. This, this cake is super soft. It's that big fat one. I have to remember to try and keep those yarn labels. I'm a girl with no yarn labels. Anyways, so I really like it and it has this curve to it. So you do that on both sides. I really like that. So these are adorable. I love them. 
I think they, and they were fast. I didn't time myself though. I did not, I want to throw them up there, but I think I'll wait. They, um, they were very fast. I did complete one that night. I was, I was sitting at home, so it was fast. So it is an easy project. If you need a gift, that one's an easy one. And you, I used a, um, number eight crochet hook. So that just goes to show you. And I mean, you can make it thicker. I mean, you can turn this pattern into a blanket as well if you wanted to. It is a nice stitch. So, I don't know what's going on outside. However, the, the, the video must go on. Okay, another thing from lap. No, no, I should finish my completed projects. I'll stick with that. So, I have... Look at this little cutie. Okay, so again, I stink at putting on faces. His eyes, I believe, are off. But whatever. <laughs> I tried. Isn't he cute? He's a little bee. A little spring bee. Oh, he's so adorable. Okay, so I got this pattern off of Etsy and it was a bundle. So you can make this and um, a star, a mushroom, and one other thing, a little frog. I failed on the frog, I think, too. However, it's complete. Let's see, where is he? His little buggy eyes. Look at that. <laughs> My husband said he's more of a snail than a frog, so maybe he needs his other half. <laughs> but this was part of the pattern. I believe this one came out a little bigger, just a little bit. But yeah, so he's cute. Froggy and bee. I, oh, this pattern is off of Etsy, and again, it's part of a bundle by Emmy Sue. Emmy Sue, what's her name? I didn't put it on here. Okay, Emmy Sue Designs on Etsy. And she has an Instagram too, if you put in Emmy Sue Designs. I, I believe it's under the same name. Um, so she has these little minis. So this would go really cute with the bee I made last time in the last video. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Oh, I love the bee. And they're so soft. This yarn is that one, that premiere something. Here it is. I'll put it down. <laughs> okay, so let me put them back. Yes, cute little bee. I also have the most adorable little... These are called puppy beans. You see his little tail? <laughs> and they stand up. They do stand up um, quite nicely. Uh, sometimes if you get it just right too, it, it'll stand. But also, it stands pretty good. It, it, it does stand well. And uh, here's his little ears. I did pretty good on this face, I think. I think it did pretty good. I wanted to put in the the beads. What are they? Those peg eyes, safety eyes. But I need more practice on that. I did try one, but the yarn I used to try and make that one um, wasn't shaped right, so I didn't finish it. I didn't want to show it. I, although that's a fail, I should I should show my fails. Anyway, we learn. So he's cute. I put. Um, no, I didn't put spots on this one. Now this is scrap yarn. Uh, so I couldn't tell you what this is other than it had nice little uh, brown. And so that's why I picked this one as my first one. This is the first one I made. And I made more because they are so cute. Then I made... I didn't have really good colors for puppies. I had like blues and yellows and I didn't want to make that into the puppy. So I tried this 
orangish one and that one's cute but I didn't know whether to make him all orange or change his colors on his feet or so I did his ears using this this yarn but it didn't quite I mean I guess it works it works it's fine but I do like the other one better so this one's nice and it's a little tail and again they stand up really well they're standing up on my desk as I put them down so they're not not hard and then I like this one I did find um so then I didn't have the colors I had in my little scrap balls so I went to the closet for bigger yarn things leftover yarns not the little ones but ones that had a little more so they're in my closet where I keep all my skeins of yarn and I, I he kind of reminds me of a koala here uh, so this is, I believe this is a Karen cake color. Karen, Karen, what are they called? <sighs> Karen, your basic Karen yarn. Drawing a blank. <laughs> but since it didn't have the same colors and design as this yarn, I wanted to try and give it some spots. And so I inserted this yarn in certain spots around so I tried to give him spots and I try to give him like different colored feet but I think just this I think since I messed up on his nose he looks more like a koala than he does a little puppy bean <laughs> and this pattern is off of Etsy it's a paid pattern um, and she gives you um, things that you can do to make them different ideas tips so that was really neat um i want to say there was something in the pattern i'm reading patterns this is a first for me so i'm doing good this one is at mini gurumi that is her inst instagram name and her etsy at mini gurumi so you can find these puppy beans on hers so that was a paid pattern so those are some completed projects all right, I am doing well, got a lot done. Now for the, let's see, whips, works in progress. And this is my main work in progress. And it is a monster of a project. And um, I won't go into too much detail. This is a Casablanca. Um, gosh, what is this called? mosaic mosaic blanket that i am making for one of my sons and i don't see my stitch marker to show you my progress Let's see how much i've made since last we've spoke wrong side it's quite large already but i want it to be his bed blanket not just a throw here we go here we go i'm getting there well i did make quite a bit if you can't see that so here is my stitch marker and this is how much i've done so quite a few rows my cute little stitch marker quite a bit it's so pretty and this yarn is Sugar Will Cotton from Yarn uh, Hobby Lobby Yarn Bee. And this is C. This color is Endless C. And the other one is Nutmeg, the one that gives the design. I don't have that one. But, um, so yeah, I've made quite a bit of progress on that. This is going... I could finish it, but I keep wanting to play with other projects instead, and so I probably could have been done by now. However, I got some other things done, so that's okay. So that is a lovely piece by, I cannot say her name other than her first name, which is, I believe pronounced Denna. It's T-I-N-N-A, and she has a YouTube channel, and she's on Ravelry. I don't know if she has, I believe she has them on Etsy, um, 
but she has a ton of patterns and she's just a blast to watch and her intros are so artistic I love I just love her intros they she does so well with them and so I've been following her from the beginning so next whip is bunny garland okay I I can't I don't know where or I mean I don't know what the I'll try to link the video but this is a bunny motif and I just thought it was so cute and I thought if I made a garland that would be a nice little Easter garland and so I made eight of them, I believe, because when you buy lights and stuff, usually they have a strand of eight. So I made eight and I just think they're so cute. And if you take this part off, this would be a nice design for a, a bulb or a circle. See right here where you narrow up. If you were to put a little circle crochet a little chain right there. This could be a, what's it called? Bulb or, or you make two of them and stuff it or, um, a bookmark. I don't know. It's too thick for a bookmark. But I really love this design. This is the um, puff stitch or popcorn stitch. So cute. So I really like my little bunnies and I did make eight of them so I want to put them like attach them here on a light strand with and have a little design I think that would be really cute for a doorway an entry over your what is it window something cute fireplace I like it so this is a work in progress. Well, well, first of all, I still have my ends to sew in, but also I need to attach it to something. So yeah, my little bunny. And I got this off of YouTube as well. What is her name? I shall link it here. <laughs> Seems to be my mind right now is I can't think of anything. Um, yeah, she, Marley Bird! There we go. I knew I'd get it. Marley Bird. She was doing a, I believe she was doing, teaching a class at Michael's online. So if you're a Michael's YouTube follower, chances are you can, you can find, well, I believe they have so many videos though. I don't know what it would be labeled under, but I will try to link it if I find it. Okay. So yeah, my little bunny motifs. I really like those. And let's see what's next. Okay. I have, I had this yarn and it was a premier yarn and it, I bought it a long time ago. And I don't know if you're like me where you just go and buy yarn because it's on clearance, but then you can't buy it again. It's usually a color or something that they're not going to have anymore, or it's a seasonal thing. Well, this one is one of those where I have not seen it again. Maybe, maybe it is. I got it at Michael's and it was just premiere. And the yarn was super thick and they came on. Oh, I do have a tag. I do. <laughs> they came on these things. Caron X Pantone. I thought it was Premier. I had it way wrong. So, Caron, this Pantone yarn. Turns out, I don't like this yarn for a mosaic crochet. And that is what I had bought it for because it was already in these little balls. And so, when you do Tina's patterns, you can, um, you do one row and then you snip the yarn. So you're not dealing with a bunch of strands everywhere, or I should say throughout the pattern. Each row is just done. Each row done. Cut it, cut it, cut it. All these, oh, this is why I have all these ends on this one. 
and she makes the patterns where you can make a design out of it or you cover them. She has this border that tucks all these in and they stay inside the double border. And so I have not yet done that. I don't know. I wanted to do the design with the, um, the fray. And I think she gets two of these and she does a little twist. And I don't know. I have not done it yet. But that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm not going to do the double lined. I hope this was recording. <laughs> okay, so so for this X Pantone yarn, I do they don't sell it from what I understand anymore. I bought all of these on clearance. I um, can't find the clearance tag. And so I had all this yarn and I did not like it for Mosaic Crochet. And so I wanted to get rid of it because it's a gorgeous, it feels soft, it's a thick yarn. It has some stretch to it though. And so um, I have decided I'm going to make my favorite thing out of it and make a bunch of granny squares. So I got all these granny squares and I love the way that they are coming out and I like that they're thick. I like that they're stretchy. Let me see if I can get some different colors. I have all kinds of different colors of this yarn. And so I don't know if I'm gonna make a little, a little lap blanket, if I'm going to make some type of sweater out of it, but I have a ton of squares now. This basket is full of them. And so we shall see what I assemble. It's going to be fun attaching these many squares though. And so that's why I saved these two because I was going to use these two to attach them. And I have more, a little bit more of these to assemble them together. So I'm going to stick with those two colors. So we shall see what I can create with my favorite thing to make, which is granny squares out of this yarn that I do like. I just didn't like it from Mosaic Crochet. So we shall see. Do you have any ideas what I can make with that? I would love to hear if you've worked with this X Pantone Karen yarn. They don't sell it anymore, like I said, so we shall see. I also, since I like granny squares so much, decided on making, I don't know where I hid it. I hid it. Oh no, I didn't. Well, I did hide it, but at least I remember where I hid it. You know, you put stuff away and then you don't remember where you put it. That, so yeah. Okay, so I made hexagons. I would really like to make a blanket out of hexagons. And Again, I was having itching fingers. I wanted to make something quick and these are quick. And so are those little granny squares. I was taking that everywhere to make those. And <clears throat> yeah, so I also want to make a blanket out of these hexagon. I would like to make a hexagon blanket. And so this was some leftover yarn and I made these little hexagons. So yeah, I don't know what yarn this is, I'm thinking it is Caron Simply Soft. It's, it is thinner. It, it reminds me of Caron Simply Soft. So we shall see what comes of that. Uh, again, that's probably a long time from now because I'm gonna need way more than that. So yeah. Okay, what else do I have? Oh, my last, my last project. Okay, where did I leave it? Okay, so for my last project, I showed you that I had made one of the bats, a cheetah. And so I am going to remake the bat. Uh, this, that was my first time making something from this book was the bat and they said it was the easiest was not because it had the most amount of pieces. So yeah, I'm gonna make this bat again. He's so cute and I am gonna make his scarf this time. Last time I didn't make his scarf. 
But last time I used whatever yarn I could and I didn't have like a grayish or bluish yarn and I still don't. I did buy some yarn to make and it turns out I don't want to use that color because it is too light and I do want to keep it these darker colors. Um, yeah, skill level. Right here. Liars. Liars. See how the, can you see the one star? That means it's easy. It's not easy. It was hard because of all the pieces. You have the wings. You have this piece and this piece and then the wing itself. And then you have the body. And I think the body and the head is one piece. I'm, yeah, body and head is one piece. But all these little pieces were just a lot. It was really a lot. And the design. So the design for the bat was, um, was shaped a certain way where you had to, what is that called? Decreasing. <laughs> where you're decreasing the stitches in this wing is, it is a little difficult. Well, I did manage to do it. I'm just saying it, it's, the skill level is not one. It is a little higher. <laughs> So I'm going to remake the bat and again I didn't have the color and so I'm hoping I'm playing yarn chicken with this. I am going to use my old Caron big thing. What are these called? You know what they are. They sell them everywhere. So I'm using my Caron yarn and um, so far this is, I think this is the bottom, the bottom of the body and again the body and the head is one piece, thankfully. <laughs> Anyways, for my first piece, for the first time I made this bat, I used Caron Simply Soft Party, which does not have a lot of texture. It is a nice, flexible yarn, and this is more stiff. So that's why I chose this, and, and it is. Look at, I mean, it is sticking nicely. So that is what I'm going to work on. Okay, so I think that completes our episode for today. I have all my completed projects. I showed you my whips and I do have some ideas. I, I do want to share it. Maybe I'll do it in another video because this one is quite long, but it is a goal for my yarn, a goal, a goal for 2022. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know if you liked what you saw. What was your favorite? And are you going to give Annie a try? Talk to you soon.